Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. This particular video will be my very first um, native lore video for my Leviathan universe. Instead of talking about three to four specific characters, I'm going to talk about the native lore that is indigenous to my creations. Just so you guys would understand. Um, first of all, you know, the character Madam Shear. She is the founder and CEO of Later Tech Industries, and most of the time she does all of that hard work herself. So other than Maya and a few assistants that are occasional, she mainly runs that entire national corporation by herself, and she's able to pull it off. Tyranitar is a childhood friend turned enemy of Madame Shear. The reason they're still enemies is that Tyranitar refuses to admit that she was wrong about something, and she vows to destroy Madame Shear so that way she wouldn't feel guilty with herself. And she just wanted to feel like he was doing something right. You know? And, uh, I'm sorry about some of my illustrations. Like, I wish I could do more illustrations. And I do feel ashamed that some of my characters aren't illustrated as of yet. But in due time, I will make it work. And just so you know, the Blue Man Clan or BMC, is Leviathan Universe equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in terms of a heroic corporation that's destined to protect all innocents. And, um, you know, the where Dentrony works as the director is uh, Paranormal Defense, or the PD. Basically, it's a cross between the BPRD and the SCP Foundation, terms of inspiration. And um, and here's an interesting thing, like the Paranormal Defense, the Space League, which is inspired from the Men in Black, and, um, and like the United Space Force, all of which are just as common and just as expected. It's like, say, the Army, or the Military, or the Air Force, or the Navy. It's considered a legit part of the government and such. <sighs> yeah. The character Centara, who's basically a six-legged Centaurian. Her mother is the Sphinx known as Fix. Even though she has a tail like a manticore as well, she's still a Sphinx. And her mother has an older sister who is Chimera, and Chimera is Centaur's trademark enemy, who wants to conquer the island of Mythos, but she would just run the entire island to the ground. That's why she was never allowed to be ruler of Mythos, because of tyranny. Centaur's father, Taurus, a Minotaur, literally risked, sacrificed his own life to imprison Chimera in a mountain. And he ended up like dying from his injuries because the only thing that could kill or even hurt Chimera is any plasma based weapon, whether it be a sword, a gun, a cannon, or anything like that. It's that's the one thing that could kill or even make her bleed out. Otherwise, she's unable to die. And, um, the Alpha Gods are composed of different deities. Like, some of them are deities in world mythologies, and some of them are completely unique to the Leviathan universe, such as Goddess, who's the creator of the cosmos and founder and leader of the Alpha Gods. There's Ellie, who is the goddess of the infinite, I believe. There's... Greek, who's the goddess of ancient Greece, I believe. 
There's the Conqueror, who's a goddess of war. There's um, Vendor, who's the goddess of auctions. Basically, the goddess of um, goddess of wealth. That's the better way to put it. Sorry. And um, okay, what else? There's Aphrodite. Aphrodite 1, which is the Aphrodite portrayed in Greek mythology. There's Aphrodite 3, which is a supposed descendant or offspring of Aphrodite. And of course, um, and here's another thing. Like, imagine the solar system that we have. All the parts of the solar system have some form of native life, believe it or not. The sun, the solarians, which are Entities that live on the sun because they're not able to live anywhere else. Mercury is populated with rock orbs, known as Mercurians, that are able to manifest on Earth, but only because of the thermometers having Mercury. Venus is populated by the Venetians, who are the descendants of, who were created by, um, Aphrodite, and Venus, as far as I know, and they're the only known residents of the planet Venus because they are able to adapt to that harsh environment and still be able to thrive in paradise, you know. Well, peacefully, I mean. Of course, the natives of Earth. The moon is where Dark Pym is um, basically located in terms of her fortress of terrorism on the moon, with her army of Dark Pym clones, and the core of the moon is the Moonians, which are insectoids that resemble kind of like humanoid crab creatures. They are subterranean long before Dark Pym even was. The Moonians were subterranean because of all the barrage that um, the moon was gone through that formed all of its craters and such. So it's obvious they had to be subterranean. Uh, Mars, of course, the Martians and all their affiliations, also subterranean to avoid uh, Olympus mods and the extreme temperature differences and and also um, trying to think. Oh, um, the sandstorms. Yeah, like they have specialized suits that allow them to survive extreme temperatures, basically. And they have a vestigial digestive system. They only have a mouth and lungs for communication. And they don't need oxygen as much as, like, humans do. They're, they have evolved where a few bits of oxygen is enough for a Martian. But never enough for a human, if that makes any sense at all. The Beltians live on the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt. And they are... Reptilian insect-looking creatures, more likely reptilian, that have been immune to the bitter cold and able to breathe the, the dense atmosphere of the depths of space. And they were able to live in the asteroid belt by eating the grubs off of the different asteroids and such. And just so you know, the depths of space, it does have air. It's just it's too heavy for human lungs to use. It would be like drowning. Sharks are able to survive unaided in the depths of space because it might as well be water in terms of the density of the atmosphere. Believe it or not. Jupiter itself has one resident known as Lobula, which is basically a creature that's able to devour entire continents. If not, then at least entire cities. And the moons of Jupiter have a people called the Jupiterians, which all are different variations depending on which moon they happen to be born and raised on and such. The Saturnians, the main Saturn itself, has the Saturnian cord, which attacks everything that wishes to be an... Like, it basically attacks any threat that it sees as a threat, which is almost everything. But they do have to hibernate for like five to ten years or something. And the Saturnians, like the Jupiterians, are also native aliens that live on the moons of Saturn 
depending on the environment that they lived in and such. The Jupiterians and the Saturnians have been warring with each other for centuries, or even millennia, because they are debating on which between the two planets they orbit happen to be more important for the well-being of the solar system. That's their debate. And um, Uranus basically has the Uranians, which were created inadvertently when Goddess was struck by a gamma ray burst. A few flakes of her DNA was blasted off of her, and it floated, and it was absorbed into the atmosphere of Uranus. And it basically created these unique hind and looking creatures, which would make sense considering it's Uranus and such, but they're also used to the unique positioning and such. The size, the angle, the rings of the planet, they're able to fry. The Neptunians are the dumbest species in the solar system. They are so stupid that they are never worth encountering for anyone who wants to visit Neptune. And plus, Neptune has the fastest wind speeds in the solar system, and they never even realize that there's extreme speed because of how dim they are. And the Plutonians are a species of sentient ice that coat all around Pluto that is capable of freezing things from the cellular level. And the core of Pluto, believe it or not, is a, a transport of sorts, like a portal or some kind of vortex or something that would transport you to a completely random point in the cosmos. You know? And of course, the Alpha Earth is different from the default Earth. It has no neighboring planets. Its home sun is purple and green. It has... A total of six rings orbiting around it, with gaps in between them because of the two moons side by side of the planet that orbits every which way. You know? And, um, in the core of the default Earth is a place known as the core, which is where prehistoric life tends to thrive without ever having to risk, like, running out of food or water. It's its own biome, which instead of relying on a sun, it relies on the heat of the core that makes it, like, that makes it daylight all the time, figuratively speaking. And in the core of the core of the default Earth is where Tartarus is located, and it's protected by a barrier. It has a barrier that keeps radio transmissions from touching it or going anywhere close to it, and that's why when people tried to scan the core of the planet, they never found Tartarus because of that barrier. It's keeping it in proximity. And um, the Alpha Earth's core, the main difference is that instead of traditional everything's fine prehistoric life, it's actually dominated by the native Axis powers, which is basically the Nazis of the Alpha Earth. And the two moons are dominated by two different sources. Like, Alpha Moon 1 belongs to the United States and their allies, whereas Alpha Moon 2 belongs to the Axis powers. And, um... Like, the core of the Milky Way galaxy is a black hole that is a two-way transport to the Alpha galaxy through a black hole in the core of that galaxy. Because imagine the Milky Way galaxy, copy it into two, and have it side by side like this. That's basically the Milky Way galaxy and the Alpha galaxy. And the reason the two Earths are so similar but not identical is because they're composed of the same collection of of planetesimals, which are rocks that are destined to become planets. And, um, and, of course, there's different planes of existence, like Wonderland, Oz, Zoland, 
the video zone, the play zone, I think it's called, the warped. Think of a, an individual reality as like an oak tree with different branches and twigs and leaves that literally stick out of this main trunk. That is just one reality. And imagine it as an infinite forest of oak trees, all with different ages and different textures, different number of leaves, different number of twigs and branches in an infinite forest. That is a way to portray the multiverse in terms of considering it. It's also compared with a room full of infinite bubbles floating every which way. And at the same time, it could be perceived as an infinite stack of paper. Like a stack of paper with infinite sheets on top of the other. Humans aren't able to perceive this, but if you are a cosmic deity, you could perceive both the infinite bubbles everywhere and the infinite stack of paper at the exact same time without stress upon the brain. A normal human would just would go vegetative or even die from the experience. But if you're a cosmic deity, or if you're smart enough at least, then it wouldn't be much of a burden. You know? And there's also... There's also the smallest dimension in Leviathan Universe, which I believe is called Shuland, home of the Shuforians. It's basically a, a subatomic dimension filled with an average population of people. Um, and it's discovered by Dr. Shuford, who is a microbiologist who inadvertently discovered um, what is called Shuland, named after her. Dr. Schufer, and the polar opposite of Shuland, the outermost layer of this infinite omyo of a multiverse, if the Leviathan universe is an orb, the outermost layer is a tropical paradise reality populated with mostly women, but still some men and different species and such. And it's not biased in the slightest. There's no conflict there's no rivalry, and it and that's simply called the beyond. That's the outermost layer of Leviathan Universe. The innermost layer is Shuland. And I really hope that I'm making things work in terms of comprehension for you guys. Um uh, You know, the Martians, just so you know have a bit of a morality code, like, you can feel sorry for them. Because they are suffering from severe overpopulation, and in order to avoid their overpopulation, they basically had to t try to terraform Earth. But they can't terraform Earth, because that would be unfair for the natives of the default Earth. You know, they have to take out all the water in the planet, make it more suitable for them. But due to the All Creatures Project, they're not allowed to. Just so you know, the two Earths, and possibly other planets as well, have three main laws. The All Creatures Project, where every species shall coexist, and every species shall be treated equally. There's the Inhuman Privacy Act, where inhuman individuals like superheroes and supervillains, for example, will have their full identities known, and they still keep their privacy, because anyone who bothers their privacy would just be fined. And it's all in proportion. And there's also the Recovery Act, where every species deserves a second chance, chance to thrive, with no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, every species deserves a chance to live. Because mercy is a blessing. And the Recovery Act is somewhat interconnected to the All Creatures Project in terms of every species coexisting. It's not native to all of the Leviathan universe. It is definitely native to the default dimension. But not all universe, not all realities have that aspect. Because, of course, infinite realities 
infinite possibilities. There's a brand new dimension established every Google Plex of a second. That's how easy it is. There's a reality where I snap my fingers three times, and there's a reality where I just did it. And when it comes to what you personally believe, the afterlife is all conceptual, Mike. If you believe that you go to heaven when you die, then no matter how you die, you'll certainly go to heaven. And if you're innocent, you will go to heaven. But if you don't believe in an afterlife at all, imagine being dead but still conscious in the coffin. And of course, there's never any need for proof for something to truly exist. As long as people believe it to be the case, that's what matters. Sometimes it takes millions of people, sometimes it takes one person. Like, for example, I've known a classic tale that proves the existence of the Toba effect. There was a gentleman who, due to his native culture from his home species, his people believe that you'll go to heaven if you die on the hands of a noble warrior. But the problem was they didn't have any proof. But because of this, he figured that it was all fake. He tried to save himself, but eventually got hit by a car. And because he died in an unintended fashion, he was dragged to the underworld. It doesn't matter if there's no proof, as long as there's enough people to believe it. As long as anyone believes it. Sometimes it takes millions of people like how it is for Buddhists and Hindu religions and such. Sometimes it just takes one person, like the cherished R.L. Stein and his Goosebumps creations. Belief is the key. If you believe in heaven, then if you're good, you will go to heaven. If you believe that there's no afterlife, then you're spending the rest of your existence conscious in the coffin. Because your spirit will be trapped in your body because of what you personally believe. Belief is the key. Wow. 22 minutes and 30 seconds. I hope I'm not boring you guys. I hope this is a fine educational video for lore in my Leviathan universe. I hope this doesn't distract the purpose of my podcast and such. I just hope that I could figure stuff out for social recognition. Thank you in advance for uh, watching me after all this time. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, comment down below, and share if you want. It's your choice. It's all on you. It's all on you. And I hope you guys, guys have a fine rest of the month, the rest of the day and such. And until next time, in transmission.